Hello guys, I think, trying to see what time it is, um, it's almost 9 o'clock and I promised I'd be doing um, this Facebook live on how to handle, um, you know, doing WAG at work and how to handle, um, you know, pressure from coworkers, and I got some really exciting um, questions they, and comments they, that came to me. Um, so I appreciate those of you who have um, given me some of the struggles you're going through at work, and I'm going to address them and also address some other things um, that have helped me. So work is a big part of our life right we spend a lot of time at work um if you work 40 hours i mean five t five days a week that's our i mean that is a big part of our time that we spend at work um by the way hopefully i'll know how to make this work but if you have questions in the process feel free to ask and i'll answer them and as well so um so if we are not in control of our food at work that's a big chunk of our life and a big chunk of the program that gets affected um, and personally I've had um, part of my work involves a lot of catering in so we have a lot of meetings that were happening over lunch and we had a lot of training uh, travel all of this stuff that was happening now, if we look at things in in sense of, of well, it's just this one time, um, it's easy to say, well, today I'll eat, but I won't, you know, I'll eat whatever food they brought in, but I won't next time. Um, so one day I decided to look over the entire year. So when we look at one week, we often see, okay, well, there's only one day. But then I looked at the whole year and I calculated how many meetings, so I, obviously I looked backwards because I didn't know how many days of the year um, we would have catered food in the future, but I knew based on last year it was gonna be similar. So I looked at how many um, lunches I've had, how many uh, events, how many days of travel, how many training, and I calculated how many meals that would be. And that was a lot of meals. So basically of my work year, about 40% of my meals were in meetings and catered food or like celebrations and so on. And so it made me realize that I had to choose and I had to be able to say no because 40% of the meals is a lot. So that what I do want to encourage you to do is if you're having a hard time saying no to your coworkers when they say, oh, let's go grab lunch and things like that, just think about it in terms of on the long term, how many days would that be of you, choosing, of you eating out? Now, the other thing that has helped me in that area was actually to look at First of all, where are we going to eat? For the most part, and correct, and maybe you guys are not the same way, but for me, a lot of time it was chain food, a lot of time it was sandwiches. So it was never really things that I love. It was mostly things that um, were convenient. It was pizza from Pizza Hut and things like that. So think about if you say yes, to these things because of peer pressure what are you saying no to so for me it was i'm saying yes to eat a pizza from pizza hut because that's what everybody did so instead i'm so when, but then when i'm out on the weekend with my friends i'm gonna say no to going to a new restaurant in town so think about it in terms of priority would you rather take that meal out and go enjoy it with people you love and with friends and stuff like that? Or do you want to eat it with your coworkers? 
Um, and again, this has taken the pressure off of having to say yes to everything. And it made me realize that I have a choice. It's not like I'm not in that victim place anymore. It's like, oh, well, I'm choosing to say no to this meal out at Chipotle because instead I would rather be able to go and try this new restaurant in town. Um, um, sorry, one of my friends just popped onto Facebook Live. Anyways, um, so um, so yeah, what would be, so saying no to going out with friends means saying yes to treating yourself with your husband on date night. So think about it in terms of, of that um so um hopefully this um you know answers the question of how to say no for a catered food food provider provided or for co-workers pressure pressuring you to go out to lunch um i've heard someone uh one of the comments was that people comment about the the food you prep um <clears throat> and so um think about instead of thinking about a lot of time we think well people are judging me or people are commenting about my food because of they're judging me instead think of it from a curiosity standpoint what can i teach them about my food what are they um how can i change their perspective about what i'm doing um i started just educating people i started sharing with them why i'm doing what i'm doing instead of just you know, pushing them away or feeling like I'm being judged and started thinking things with curiosity. And that completely ch changed things around. Um, and again, instead they started, and it's funny because over time, people started shifting and they started prepping their foods and bringing it with them. And they would pop into my office and they would say, hey, guess what? Today I ate a fruit instead of eating, insert something else. Um, so once I started educating people, again, it was no longer about judgment and it became about an exchange. So just share with them what you're doing, share, share with them how it makes you feel. And think about it, a lot of time people are just not in a place where this is a priority for them but it has nothing to do with you and it's okay for them to feel that way. Um, so one of the other comments I received was how to connect besides through food. Um, again, for this part, I do want to encourage you to think about um, how can I influence other people? Um, a lot of time, again, we think that what we're doing is a hindrance to other people but um, if we cannot connect through food, how about we go on a walk? So it, a lot of people want to go walk, want to be, say they want to be more active, say they want to go get, you know, say they want to get healthier and things like that, but they never take the action to do it. So start the walking group and have that be your time to connect with someone. So if someone offers you to go to lunch, Maybe you say, how about we go on a walk instead um, and schedule that in. And that can be a way to connect. And um, what started, you know, at first I felt really isolated because I used to tell my coworkers a lot, no, I don't want to go to lunch. And so inv eventually they stopped inviting me. And then I started inviting them to go on walks. And now we actually have a running group at work. So take that step and start thinking of creative ways that you can inspire your coworkers to connect in a different way. And a lot of time doing something active, going to like a meeting in town or a personal development course or, you know, things like that, sharing a podcast and talking about it. These are all great way to create that connection without being um, completely centered on over food. Um, Another thing came up was treats and break rooms. And we do know that these are very popular. There, there's a lot of treats and break rooms and it's very difficult to say no to. There's a really good article on WAG that, um, you know, talks about whether you're an abstainer or a moderator. 
And um, if you are a moderator, what I recommend you do a lot of time, if we don't allow ourselves to have a treat, then we start feeling that pressure of, well, I can't have this. And then there's this voice in your head who's going to be saying, well, no, but you know, just one. And so you're going to start negotiating with yourself. So instead, what you do is you give yourself permission to have, again, decide what do you want and how many you will allow yourself. A lot of time, I even bring my own treats and, um, and then I use though, like I log, I bring treats that I love and I log them into my schedule. I know in the afternoon is usually when I'm most likely to want a treat. So I'll log it in and I know I'm looking forward to this in the afternoon. So I'm no longer tempted by grabbing a treat all the time. It's because I know I can have one and it's part of my plan. Um, another comment I received was about navigating potlucks. Um, so these are a little bit difficult and that's, you know, that's again because we all gather around food. We think about food as a way to connect. It's nice to um, get to taste what other people are making. It's again, it's a way to connect and this is completely normal. So um, ways to navigate this is to allow yourself again to try things. So it's once we give ourselves permission, it's easier to also stop. So if you give yourself permission to be, you know, to eat what's at the potluck and to have small portions of it and just taste it, it's going to be a lot easier than saying I'm not, it might, for some people, it might be easier to say I'm not going to have any, but at least you can be there. You can have that connection. You can share with your coworkers without overindulging. Um, and in that case, a lot of times the same rules that you use, like if you were having Thanksgiving or a meal out, you will want to use those same, um, you know, those same rules, starting with lots of, you know, greens and veggies, making sure you're eating protein. And if you're eating a dessert or something that's very heavy, just having a little bit of that. Um, again, here, I want to encourage you to think about it on the long run, right? Do you have one potluck a year or is your group the kind that has a potluck every two weeks? If it's a potluck every two weeks, then in that case, you might want to bring your own food and just eat what you made. And so that you're not tempted to eat what other people brought, you would have to make something that you actually really enjoy. If you're eating something and you're not excited about it, it's going to be very easy to be tempted by everything else. But if you're eating something that you love, then it's going to be much easier to say no to what's there. Um, another thing to do is for me, I usually make sure that when I'm, you know, that night, I have something that I love that I'm going to go eat. So maybe a bowl of ice cream that's already planned in my logs. And then I can, I know I'm going to have. So this allows me again to say no to something that might look good, but I don't love it. So instead of saying yes, out of politeness, um, <clears throat> Yes, George, random question. All right, I'll let you type it out I'll, and I'll keep talking in the process. Um, oh, I'm about to start, okay. I'm about to start WAG for the second time. The first time I did tr didn't track condiments. I am going to continue um, answering the questions I have and then um, once the question pops in, I'll answer it. Oh, okay. So I'm about to start WAG for the second time. The first time I didn't track condiments. I had great successes even though I didn't. Am I messing up? Um, the answer is it depends. 
Uh, this is going to depend on a lot of factors. And personally, I would just recommend you talk it out to your coach, uh, with your coach. So for instance, for me, I know like, I know my deficit is not going to be, you know, as a woman, I have, I'm eating less calories. So I want to track the condiment if they have calories because, and, and if they have macros, um, because they're going to impact my result, but someone else, depending on their goals, depending on their macros, is going to be, have less of an impact. So this is going to be a case by case. And I definitely recommend you ask that question to your coach, because depending on where they have you, um, they may offer different options. Um, so, okay. Um, so we talked about, you know, looking at the big picture and looking at how many meals um, a year you would be eating with your coworkers if you actually chose to eat out every time and what that would take away from other opportunities of enjoying food with your friends, enjoying food with your family and so on. So when you know, when people ask you to go out or when you're at a meeting, ask yourself, if I say yes to this meal, what am I going to be saying no to in the future? So if you're saying yes to this meal, are you going to go home and be mad at your husband if he wants to go on date night? And you're like, well, I can't eat out because I have to count my macros. So think about it in terms of values and in terms of priority. Where do your priority lies? Once you get clear on those, it will be much easier for you to say no to your coworkers. When it comes to um, you know group lunches and things like that, one thing that I do is if it's catered in, I actually offer to be the one who orders the food. This way I can make sure that whatever is being ordered has something that I can eat. And usually that will likely be like a garden salad with grilled chicken or um, for the mo most part that's usually what I get or if we're doing like we're doing a dessert I'll bring a fruit like cut fresh fruits um, if we're having a meeting I'll you know I'll go order the stuff that we're eating for snacks I'll make sure there's beef uh, beef jerky I make sure there's um, uh, fruits again I'll make sure that what I need is there. And then my coworkers might have, and it's funny because my coworkers have shifted. Once healthier options became available, they stopped eating the candy, they stopped eating the chocolate, they stopped eating um, all of these things. And instead they will, a lot of them have started choosing uh, fruits and things like that. Um, <clears throat> When it comes to people criticizing, um, a lot of times I also ask myself, do I admire them and do I want to live their life the way they live it? And this a lot of time makes it easier to not justify myself to other people. So, um, so if, you know, if someone is overweight and I mean, they could be very happy with their life and there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. But if I know that the way they're living their life will make me unhappy, then I say thank you for offering your opinion. Thank you for your perspective and whatever I'm doing works for me. Um, and then cut it off to that, you know. Um, but really limiting, you know, it's about how you live your life. Other people can live their life their own way, and that's perfect, perfectly okay. Um, and then think about who you could be inspiring. So I'm going to share a, a story about whenever I, um, whenever I started bringing my food. Uh, to work. So a lot of people were asking me, a lot of people were, you know, looking at me, I was getting those weird uh, looks and stuff like that. And then um, other people started bringing their food, other people were having 
those like were feeling guilty eating the food that was there and they were feel and they had their own nutritional like some people were doing keto some people were vegetarians and stuff like that but they just felt shame saying no and felt guilty saying no to the food that was available so they were eating it anyways and when i started bringing my my own food i inspired other people to step up and start bringing their food too and from there i can tell you like today almost i mean so many people that are at work are actually doing macros now all of the snacks that are available at meetings incorp include fruits and vegetables and um and uh, some kind of protein and um you know a lot of people now come to me and ask me what should we order or what should we have at this meeting and so on so maybe at first the work is going to be difficult but as people start seeing you and start seeing your discipline and start seeing your changes you're also inspiring them to um to make those changes in the future so um these are as i mean there's so much more i can share about this and i would love if anybody has questions please message me because i know i'm past the time i was allowed to be on a facebook live so um if you have questions i'm very happy to talk to you about uh you know to answer them feel free to message me and hopefully some of the tips and shifts and per perspectives are going to be helpful to you so that you can better navigate uh, workplace and treats and um, all of that. So hope you have a good weekend. Bye guys.